Okay, this is on the topic of our emotional energy or our energy being drained by people that we might be interacting with, people who are in our family environment. I often hear people use the words of I'm surrounded by energy vampires, people who suck my energy out of me, or especially in the practitioner world that I work with as well, is they say, I just, I really feel people's emotions, but it saps me of my energy, or I'm such an emotional empath. And the words emotional empath is something that I will always explore a little bit further with someone because empathy is very different to sympathy. Sympathy is like, I feel sympathetic, I feel sorry for you in your situation versus empathy is I feel what's going on for you, I relate to you, but the person doesn't necessarily want you to fall into sympathy with them. They just want you to acknowledge um, how they might be feeling, but it's not your responsibility to take it on. So I've put in here a question that I'm constantly asking myself and what I would remind people to question of themselves is, is it me or is it them? So is it me or is it them allows you to take responsibility in the situation. Is my energy drained right now because of me and I feel like it's my responsibility to take it on and I don't have the energetic boundaries or is it truly them? Now I'm going to talk a little bit about practitioners on here because this is where it comes up a lot but it's still going to relate to those of you who are in the non-practitioner world on release is that I find that uh, a lot of practitioners can struggle to interact with clients especially on this deeper emotional level because they will get drained and then there's a lot of stuff on the internet out there and this is where I hear people identify as I'm such an emotional empath I can't do this work and what I say to that is I do believe you can do the work but if you have a belief that you're an emotional empath and that this is the result that you feel drained every time then if you don't change that belief system you will continue to feel drained by your clients so I feel like I'm an emotional empath. I can read people's emotions when I'm interacting with them, when I'm hearing their words, looking at their body, when I am having a verbal conversation with them, listening, hearing between the lines. But I don't get drained by this interaction because I have done my own emotional work. So what I'm going to reflect back onto you is if you feel that you get drained by interactions with other people, if you feel that you're this emotional empath that gets drained, is ask yourself, is it me or is it them? Is my emotional cup so full that I just have no energetic boundaries that I take on other people's stuff? Or do I have this belief that I have got to be responsible to help people in need? So why I want to talk about practitioners a little bit on here, and I usually keep it quite separate, is that I say to the practitioners that if you truly want to do this emotional work, if you want to take people to this place where they are processing some of the nasty and horrible stuff that they may have experienced in life that may have happened to them, then to be able to hold the space, you've got to constantly work on your own emotions, your own emotional cup, and keep it empty and clear so that you can hold the space. So it's not the responsibility of me as a practitioner to take on someone else's emotions. They don't want that. We've probably all, or most of you have experienced being in a clinical setting where you've had a doctor, a therapist, a practitioner, a counsellor, no matter what it is, where you have felt like you have um, been the therapist for the therapist or that they're a little bit off. And so I always want to do my own work so that I can show up in the best place possible because I know that you don't want me to get intertwined into your story. You want me to maybe help you and support you and guide you on your story but as soon as I get enmeshed into your story I'll lose sight of how I can help you. So energetic boundaries are also set by really knowing your values and also having the ability to say no to people when you've got your own full emotional cup and you don't have the capacity to hear other people's stuff. Is it me? Is it them? It's also, can you make a choice to remove yourself from a conversation or from an environment in the instant that you feel like it's draining you? 
can you communicate in a compassionate way that you can't listen to this in this moment in time? Now, the response that you will have to these people is going to change depending on what the circumstances are. There is no one size fits all response. But in summary, it's about holding your energetic boundaries. And I don't believe it's easy to do that when you have your own full emotional cup. So releasing is all about processing your emotions, creating the space so that you also have the ability to see and feel what's going on, process the emotions in the moment, be very aware of them, let them in and let them out. So that's where I say I'm an emotional empath, but people's emotions don't drain me because I know that they're not my responsibility, but I see them, hear them, feel them, process them, and then it's gone because I actually can't help people if I get enmeshed in their story and get entangled and then start to get drained in my energy. You know, we're, we're often not that great of help to people if we don't have our energy. So energy vampires is, is there something that you can communicate? Is there a way that you can remove yourself from a situation and start to put up an actual communicative verbal boundary and an energetic boundary? Energetic boundaries really is more when you empty out your emotion, own emotional cup so that people know, hey, like there isn't even an invitation here for me to dump on this person. Um, and then emotional empath does not mean that you need to feel drained by other people's emotions. And it is the ability to process those emotions on a regular basis. So I've done a lot of past historical processing and I can have an interaction with someone. It may not feel that pleasant or it may be great. We process good emotions as well. But it's the ability to just have this awareness, the feeling around it, process it in the moment or as soon after that allows me to not to start fill my emotional cup up over time. So a good question for any of you who might use these words and look, I've heard them over and over again is always question. What is the role and responsibility that I have in this? Because only you can change. Is it me or is it them? And sometimes it truly can be the other person, but if you take responsibility, only you can decide what you can change in this situation. So this is on being drained by other people's emotions, being an emotional empath. There are many different forms of empathy. Um, there are also, I guess, different clairsenses that people can tune into. So like clairvoyance is where people can see the future vision other people are clairaudient, where they hear things. Other people are clairgustance, where they like taste when things are off. Um, clairsentience is when people like smell a rat. So different forms of empathy, different forms of clairsenses to tap into. But I don't believe that anything that is a gift is something that has to drain us. And that's where we can switch our belief system and be curious. How can I shift this? How can I tap into this? What work can I do? on myself. Is it me or is it them?